nós. Ricky, another registering officer gone in less than a year. Ken, now Ricky no longer is here. So quick, so sudden, without any warning, early Ricky checked out, leaving us mourning. Mourning a life that was full of fun, jokes galore when Ricky was around. Never a dull moment when Ricky showed. You can bet some story he would unfold. Stories about Guyana or Gaddafi the cat or the night of fishing when Leonard made a catch. Story about Leanne when to the office she first appeared. You can bet about Eric and his many escapades. That was Ricky, full of jokes. Never a dull moment when Ricky spoke. A wonderful guy who loved the court. He will buy some for a few of the folks. But he was my peer for many years. He was the officer for St. Philip North, I for St. John. No problem when vacation came wrong. November was his, December was mine. He was my friend and co-partner. We worked at St. John by election together. I the returning officer, he my deputy. Indeed, he was very essential to me. When election fever was running high, the St. Philip Posse would work late at night. As they headed home on the highway, the women in front, Ricky behind, making sure they were all right. Ricky will always inquire about me. I hope he's home cooking, he would say to my wife. Ricky, my friend, you know I don't cook. I burn up the cassava, keep your mouth shut. Ricky, it is hard to know you will no longer be around. It hurts, it deeply hurts, it hurts way down. That death has snatched you from us in quick time. No warning, no hint of leaving us could be found. Now you are gone and we remain as we commend you to God in Jesus' name. For he knows our sorrows, is acquainted with our griefs, and in him it's comfort for our pain. Thank you.
Brothers and sisters, friends, we commence this act of service in thanksgiving to God for the life of uh, Ricky. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. For the first things are passed away. We continue to worship God together as we join our voices in singing, How Great Thou Art. Sweetly in the trees, 
When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and the broad blue and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great for how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God is Son, Spirit sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Please be seated. Invite us to bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom we move and breathe and have our being, God, creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that is therein, God, who have uh, made us unto yourself, and have given us the breath of life. God uh, who is above all else. And yet a God uh, who journeys beside us. This God uh, we bless you. We praise and uh, magnify your holy name. For you are good. God you are worthy to receive our praise. And uh, our thanksgiving. For it is you that have given us the breath of life. And in whom we move and breathe and have our being. As we come uh, this evening giving you thanks and praise. 
for the life of uh, our dear departed brother Hanson. We pray, O oh God, uh, that uh, you would uh, descend and your presence will be among us and uh, in us. We pray especially for the family. That, O oh God, uh, they may experience your comforting presence. A peace that passeth all understanding. And in the midst of their grief, O oh God, remind uh, them of the hope that we all have uh, in you, that uh, those who are in you, we are safe and uh, secure, and oh God uh, will uh, see you face to face. And so most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of a Henson. We may not be overcome by this trial. But we may hold fast trusting in your goodness. And in your mercy. Assure us O Lord our God. That death is not the end of those who put their faith. And their trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and the peace that you give to your troubled children. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and your glory upon us. Through Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, Christian friends, those who occupy public office or private, those uh, who are co-workers, friends, relatives of uh, Henson, otherwise known as Ricky, good uh, afternoon to you in the name of the resurrected, reigning, returning Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. We are met in uh, this solemn moment to commend uh, to Almighty God, Henson Ricardo Aline, into the hands of uh, a God uh, who loved him with an everlasting uh, love and sent forth his son, uh, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer. For it is uh, by the stripes of Christ that uh, we are made whole. And in his name alone that we have our salvation. As uh, we celebrate the life uh, of uh, Ricky, let us uh, recall his life through the words of eulogy and tributes that will be offered. And then uh, hear a word of God to us from Holy Scripture and through his uh, woman servant. I invite then uh, Brother Lawson Yearwood, a friend uh, of the family, to read the eulogy. This would be followed by the tributes. Good afternoon. I am Lawson Yearwood. And I'm honored and humbled to have been asked by my friend and Christian brother, Brother Stafford Arlene, to present this eulogy for his son, Ricky, on his behalf. This remembrance of Ricky has been prepared, prepared by his father, Brother Stafford, in the first person. And though the voice you hear will be mine, the words are the words of Brother Stafford himself. So here we go.
eulogy for Hanson, Ricardo, Carlyle, Allen. Then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is the new moon and thou shalt be missed for your seat will be empty. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 18. Thou shalt be missed for your seat will be empty. Today, those wor same words apply to our family. There is now a void in our family which no one can fill. There is now an empty bed in our house, an empty chair at our table, a space in our hearts which will forever be vacant. We shall not see his face again. Never again shall we hear his voice. Our hearts will forever be broken. Henson Ricardo Carlyle, known by all and sundry as Ricky, was born to Inez and me on May 16, 1959. We were extremely proud and happy that our firstborn was a boy. We taught him to read before he went to school. The old phonic method is still the best, A for apple, B for bat, and so on. We also taught him the first few numbers and simple arithmetic. Every night, I would have to tell him a story, Snow White, Goldilocks, and Barabbit, to name a few. When I ran out of stories, storybook tales, I invented my own. We later introduced him to the popular children's authors, Enid Blyton, Agatha Christie, the Biggles and Billy Bunter series, among others. As he progressed through primary school, I introduced him to children's classics, such as Kidnapped and Treasure Island. He enjoyed the poetry of Longfellow. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, and Wordsworth, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vale and hill, when all at once I saw a, a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. So often I would hear him quote from Goldsmith's poem, The Village Blacksmith. He looks the whole world in the face, for he owes not any man. Ricky hated to be in debt. That was a trait inherited from his mother or from the blacksmith. He made sure that his bills were promptly paid. At Shrewsbury Primary School, he came under the tutelage of J.M. Maxwell, principal, who enforced such tenets as manners maketh man, to thine own self be true, finders not keepers, and be in time for duty's call. These principles were also reinforced by teachers such as Casey Agard, Edith Gibson, the late Clyde Ford, and Joan Bain. I dare say Ricky carried them with him all through life. He pursued his secondary education at the now defunct Christ Church High School and Combermere. His field of studies included English language and literature, yeah. mathematics, and accounts the usual secondary school curriculum. He particularly favored accounts. At the insistence of his sister Andrea, he took a course at the Barbados Community College where he studied the art of photography and film development. He also attended the Barbados Hotel School. I am not sure what he learned there <laughs> because his he possessed no culinary skills. <laughs> I know he loved and appreciated good food. Maybe that is what he learned. <laughs> Ricky worked for a brief period at the Southern Palms Hotel and later for some years at Cave Shepherd and Company. When the opportunity came to join the staff of the electoral department, he grabbed it with both hands. He thoroughly enjoyed working in that department. He loved his work and his co-workers. Certain persons were household names at our home. Gracie, Bostick, Walters, Roger, Michael, Ernesta, John Haynes, Bridgman Bushel, Holloway, Ken Hall, and the list goes on. 
He was thorough and received excellent testimonials from every part of the constituency of St. Philip North and beyond. After the last general elections in St. Vincent, where he was an observer, he received a call at home from the Prime Minister of St. Vincent, addressing him as Comrade Aline and complimenting him on an excellent job. I did not know that Ricky was an international figure. I did not know that he meant so much to so many persons. Since his passing, we have received expressions of sympathy from around the world. Nigeria, New York, Miami, Indiana, and other parts of the USA. Montreal, Toronto, and other parts of Canada. Jamaica, Trinidad, St. Vincent, Bahamas, and other Caribbean islands and from every corner of Barbados. Mrs. J. Humphreys from Trinidad, who introduced herself as his Trinidadian mother, described him as dependable or reliable, helpful, sincere, honest, friendly, sociable, a list too long to recall. It has warmed our hearts to hear how good he was to so many people. Ricky was an animal lover he made sure that our domestic animals were well looked after. Alexis dogs re received their regular baths and flea and tick treatments from him. Orange the cat was his recent favorite. No cat was ever so well provided for. He named many of the cats that we had, op that we had over the years with Gaddafi holding a special place in his heart. The doves, blackbirds, and other winged creatures which fre frequented the backyard also benefited from his kindness. Ricky was not an every Sunday church goer, but his belief in the Creator was unshakable. He had a pretty good knowledge of the Holy Writ. Since his passing, I have realized that he was reading an article titled The Thief on the Cross. And in that article, he underlined one sentence, you will be with me in paradise. That sentence must have meant something to him. Could it be that it was a premonition of what was to happen? He was very proud of his mother's skill at cooking, especially preparing cuckoo. He boasted about it to his friends. He advertised it among his acquaintances. Saturday was therefore a special day for him. It was cuckoo day. Every Saturday after eating his, this meal, he would say, very good job again, mom. Ricky was the ultimate big brother to Dawn and Andrea. He taught them to play many games such as suck me well, dominoes. He taught them the importance of reading the board and studying the facial expressions of players. This mattered because the losers had to consume a glass of water. Every December, Ricky, Dawn, and Andrea would engage in a 50s championship. These battles continued for the entire month and would come to an end at midnight on December 31st when the champion would be, de would be crowned. Alexa, his niece, was his pride and joy. He was easily her biggest cheerleader. Those of you who knew Wiki well would have heard him speak about her. He supported her in everything. When she won the divisional swim championship at her primary school, Ricky was over the moon. When Alexa gained entrance to Queen's College, I am positive that you must have heard him shouting and celebrating Alexa, or rather Queenie, as he called her, was truly his girl, and he would move the earth for her. Ricky's knowledge of the St. Philip North constituency was comprehensive. He used to quip that he knew half of St. Philip, and the other half knew him. He surely knew almost every person above the age of 16. He had a special concern for the elderly, and would go out of his way to assist them. More than one co-worker described him as the mayor of St. Philip, 
because he was a guru on all things St. Philip. He even wrote the description for the constituency of St. Philip West. He willingly shared his knowledge with everyone. Another colleague remembers his lively spirit, saying there was never a dull moment when he was around. Here are contributions from others. From Gracie Bolden Thompson. Words cannot express how saddened, shocked, and confused I am at the passing of my friend Rick, Ricky. Had I known that Friday would have been our last day together, I would have done so much more, like staying a little longer, telling him how much he meant to me, and, lis and listen to another fib that sung sounded as though it was the truth. Here, I must go off course script for a minute. My first reaction to that comment was a chit from the old block. <laughs> but that might appear a bit, <laughs> that might appear a bit untrouble to my friend, Brother Stafford, who tells stories and not fibs. Perhaps Ricky was simply recounting some of the bedtime stories he had heard <laughs> from his dad as a little boy. But let me get back on script. At times, he did not mix words, yet he had a gentle heart and soul. Ricky was never afraid to pull me up and was very quick to tell others, don't get between me and Gracie. When you saw Ricky, you saw me. I will forever cherish our serious and crazy memories. The many secrets we shared, the ABBA sessions and the impactful conversations. I miss him so much. I will keep him in, our, in a special place in my heart. I love you, my friend. From John Haynes, when Ricky joined the department, he was very keen to get on with the job of registering officer for St. Philip North. A fitting title for him was Mr. Amity. He was a very outspoken and genuine person who gave his last and was always willing to help. From Leanne Butcher, every funeral or function you would ask, Wait for 3213, and my answer would always be yes. If we were both not leaving from this office, you would call and make sure you gave detailed direct directions, especially if it was in the country. Now I'll be going to your funeral. No directions, no escort. No, no, I had to wait on Butch about five times because 3213 could not keep up. No, how we big, no, how we big girl. No, anything. There is no more 3212 escorting 3213. Rest in peace, Rick. To say that we will miss him would be the understatement of the year. There is now no one to perform a 101 little task around the home. Who will change that flex line or replace a washer in the tap? Who will clean the grease trap or reach that last breadfruit from the top of the tree? Who will check brakes, oil, and coolant on his sister's cars? Who will reap the peas or harvest that large bunch of bananas? Who will call you with that nickname that only he would dare to use? Who will come to your rescue when you have a problem with the care? As a family, we believe that when we two cross the bridge, there will be a joyous reunion. We thank you all for your attendance here and online, your prayers, love, concern, support, assistance, and expressions of sympathy, as well as the wonderful memories of Ricky that you so graciously shared with us. He was truly the mayor of St. Philip. God bless you all. Now rest in peace, Rick. Thank you.
Indeed, we give God thanks for a life so well lived. We hear solo by Kenneth Armstrong, followed by a tribute from the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, read by Ian Brown, and then a musical from Stephen Cumberbatch. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Last night I lay out sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, Methought the voice of angels from heaven in answering. Methought the voice of angels from heaven in answering. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Salem, lift up your gates and sing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to And then me taught my dream was changed, the streets no longer rang. Hush were the glad hosanna, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As a shadow of a cross arose upon a lowly hill, as a shadow of a cross arose upon a lowly hill, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, hark how the angel I sing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to Once again the scene was changed, new earth they seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates open wide, and all 
Lord, my tender, and no one was denied. No need of moon or stars by night or sun to shine by day. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, sing for the night is Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna forevermore. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna's thought afternoon. If I was the MC, I would have said you need to clap for that. <laughs> yes. My name is Ian Brown. I am the Deputy Chief Electoral Officer. Before I begin, permit me to acknowledge the presence of former Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Hensley Robinson, over on the right. <laughs> Mr. Mr. John Haynes, who was the former chair of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Mrs. Brenda Corbin. And uh, Margaret. Along with us are a number of staff members, including our assistant chief, Mrs. Rosalind Springer, and a number of staff. Mrs. Angela Taylor, the Chief Electoral Officer, is away at a conference in Trinidad. So, it is indeed my honor to offer this tribute to our friend, colleague, Henson Ricardo Allen, on behalf of the Commission, the management, and the staff of the Electoral Department. We all know him as Ricky. I believe so do everybody in here. He joined the department on June the 19th, 1995, with fellow officer Anthony Graves, who was sitting here, who is now retired as well. <laughs> Ricky came to the department with a prior knowledge of the elections procedures. Having worked in the 1981, 86, 91, and 94 general elections as a presiding officer in the now, as you know, St. Philip North. Therefore, it was no coincidence that he was assigned the registering officer for that constituency from 1995 until his sudden passing a couple of weeks ago. Ricky served as deputy, chief, as deputy returning officer for that constituency in the 1999 general elections. That is where we became even closer because I was the election clerk for St. Philip South that he was chosen then to be the returning officer in 2003 was no surprise. And he remained 
the returning officer until now. His deputy, I see Stevie somewhere around, for the last how many? All, right? For a number of the elections, he is here along with a number of other officers from that beloved St. Philip North constituency. I know that the elections in St. Philip North will not be the same again. I, I will dare say maybe you all are St. Philip because we kicked up pride in taking responsibility for the St. Philip constituencies during elections. I can attest to that because I was once the returning officer and Richie's, Ricky made sure that we were taken care of from in the office. And it is only after I became the deputy chief that I understood more about how useful and how helpful what he was doing to us. During his almost 28 years with the department, he acted in three other constituencies and shared his extensive knowledge with those constituencies and with others officers. In fact, as you would have heard this, when the constituency of St. Philip West was created, Ricky wrote the description, and you all know how he behaved, right? <laughs> he was very proud of this. When we, having joined the department by then, we had to do the realignment of some polling districts in St. Philip. Ricky was again at the forefront, so never mind it was St. Philip West or St. Philip, so Ricky knew it. And we all appreciated what he was doing for us. He had a wealth of knowledge of the constituency boundaries, of all the constituencies. And as you would have heard already, he achieved the name of Mayor of St. Philip. He always boasted that he was a bred and born Philippine. I can attest to that because, again, on hearing of his untimely passing, one of our mutual friends said, Ian, you know, a true St. Philip man gone. And, and we all know that. We at the Electoral quickly found out that that was no idle boast because anything you wanted to know about St. Philip or the environs, the mayor knew. And he always had the answer. Ricky had a passion for his job and was dedicated to seeing things at the office go well. Sometimes he would walk into my office, uninvited of course, pull out a chair, would sit back in his usual way. All right. And you know last night when I was lying in my bed, a thought came to me. I said, well no Ricky. And he would proceed to say whatever it was, whether it was about the elections, whether it was about registrations, whether it was on anything. And then he would end by saying, you know, I believe that is a good idea, and you all should try it. He would pause, and then he would say, but then again, you know, I ain't management. <laughs> and he would get up and leave. <laughs> when the department commenced the registration of the population for the trade and tidy card, Ricky was automatic choice for the team at St. Mark's Resource Center. I knew he wanted to be in six rows because that was more action, right? But we had to do what we had to do. And he was then the one for St. Mark's, his constituency. His colleagues there were amazed at his knowledge. And when I say colleagues here, I mean because we had to employ some additional staff, those would not have known him that well. So on seeing how he operated at St. Mark's, they were really amazed that he knew not only the people, but the area and everybody. Like, you still have at the house down the road there? Yes. Yeah. And so therefore, Ricky would see you coming through the door, and by the time you get to sit down, he would have had half the registration done already. <laughs> yeah. So much so that Valerie, one of the workers, said, this man here is so knowledgeable. And that is a, that is a, a phrase that she would always share with us. It is really regretted that he will not be around to see the end of this project. That's life. In 2020, Ricky represented Barbados as a member of the Caribbean Electoral Observer Missions to the general elections in St. Vincent and Grenadines. Although this was during the height of the um, pandemic, Ricky was happy and ready and willing to go to be of service to his country. And you know, of course, when Ricky came back, we knew everything about the elections in St. Vincent. He did not hesitate to let us know what went on and what he didn't, what didn't happen. 
he was a proud Combermerian, up and on, <laughs> who wanted the child or the children of most of the persons in the office who were doing 11 plus to pass for what he called the University of Waterford. From a spiritual background, Ricky, Ricky was, would always remind us that he was a Methodist and was raised in the Shrewsbury Methodist Church in St. Philip. At Cropover, there was no other Calypsonian or no other Calypso king than Red Blaster Bag. I need not say that. He loved all the bag songs, but especially loved Boat Raid and I'm Alive, the one that we all call Hallelujah. Ricky also loved quotes, and he bought an abundance of those and always shared them with the guys in the office. I think I remember hearing the guy on security at St. John saying yes, he would always bring a quote for him. But above all, as you would have heard already, he loved his milk corn cuckoo. And on Saturdays, he would send these WhatsApp surrounds to members, members of staff with his plate of cuckoo and saying, look, this is the picture of him and his cuckoo from Mother Inez. And all of us knew Inez and Stafford, his beloved parents, because every year he would remind us of their birthdays via WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever means Ricky knows. He was a very jovial person and there was never a dull moment when Ricky was around as his many jokes brought laughter in the office. Thanks Lawson for letting us know. <laughs> we all remember the jokes about the pig head, the bag of feed. These are office jokes, right? <laughs> you can ask Pauline Leonard Andrea or Rosalind, as these jokes were mostly about them, but they were never offended because Ricky just had that knock about him, right? And of course, the joke was this one about a roach, a rataroni pie. Y'all can work that one out. <laughs> Ricky was a larger than life figure who, on entering the office, would always announce his presence with the words, Greetings, Earthlings. And we all know that he was there. He meant different things to various persons in the office. For some, he was their mechanic, the media house. Some of us call him the BBC. He was a Google map, a layman partner, transportation, no names mentioned, and protector of his beloved St. Philip Posse. But most of all, Ricky was our friend, a real friend. We will remember working those late nights and early mornings in the leading up to the 2022 elections. At some point in the morning, we would hear something like, St. Philip Posse, are you ready to go to the Republic? <laughs> Nobody would move and he would repeat it. Then on leaving the office, Rick would make sure that he was at the back because he wanted to ensure that the seven or eight cars that would have been journeying to St. Philip would arrive in the Republic safely. The atmosphere in the office will never be the same again, especially in the northwestern corner. Those of you who know the office will know where the northwestern corner is and who sits there. <laughs> I, <d> <laughs> yeah. I know that our former colleague, Kane, who passed away just last year, will be waiting there to greet him with open arms. I imagine that they will have a lot to talk about, and I can just see Ricky filling him in on what is happening with the Trident ID card and what is not happening with the Trident ID. <laughs> so my friend, so long, so long. On behalf of the commission, the management, and the staff, and a lot, on behalf, I'm sure, of all the St. Philip election workers and those who would want to be seeing this, I extend deepest condolences to you, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, Andrea Dawn, and the extended family. May his soul rest in peace. I thank you.
I'm told that that was uh, Ricky's favorite song. And uh, we turn to the ministry of the word and share in his favorite scripture passage, 
Psalm 46, which would be read by Anthony Barrow, the epistle from Revelation 21, 1 to 7 by Octavia Collins, and the gospel, John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6 and verse 27 by Joy Green. Good evening, everyone. The Lord be with you. The reading is from Psalm 27, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof row and be troubled, though the mountains shake, with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he have made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the word of God taken from Revelations chapter 21 verses 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here ends the epistle reading. <clears throat> the gospel is taken from the book of John, chapter 14. The gospel is taken from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and 27. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. So Chiquita was the favorite pop song, but the battle hymn of the Republic, the favorite church song, the favorite hymn. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Be still and know that I am God. Words from Psalm 56, 46, sorry, Ricky's favorite psalm. Let us pray. Speak to us, O God, now. And as you speak to us, we ask that your Holy Spirit will urge us to listen, not only with our ears, God, but to listen, Lord, with our hearts, so that as we celebrate the life of one whom we knew and loved, that, God, we will go forward living according to your will and your way. 
So be with us, O oh God, in everything that is said this afternoon and heard and done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Allow me first to express condolence to the Allen family at the passing of their loved one, Ricky, to Brother Stafford, Sister Allen, Sister Dawn, Sister Andrea and Alexa, and all the family, the relatives and friends, your work colleagues here, we pray that God will comfort you in a special way and that this experience will draw you closer to God. May God grant you the peace that surpasses all of our understanding. I met Ricky a few years ago and had a discussion with him. I never thought that that would have been the real, the last real discussion with him. But I believe from our discussion that Ricky had a heart for God. And so this evening, I am saying that I believe with the heart that Ricky had for his God, that he would have had and used the opportunity in those moments to call out to his God. So I'm saying this afternoon as we mourn, let us not be downspirited, but let us, as he wrote and underlined in that um, book that um, Brother Lawson was speaking about, we can believe that he's had an opportunity to cry out to his God and that he is with him. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. There's a story told of a person who was grieving because she had lost a loved one and was devastated. She visited her pastor for counseling. The pastor asked us to, her to go around the neighborhood and to check on every house and find out which one did not have a death and report back to him. After many days of checking, the lady gave up because she could not find one house that did not have an encounter with death. Yes, we have all had to deal with death in some way and at some time. Although most of us would prefer not to have to face it. Death is one of the things that we will encounter. And today it is the Aline family Tomorrow it will be some other family. No one knows. But what I can assure you nevertheless is that God will be with you during the difficult period if you call upon him. You heard that? God will be with you. So the psalmist of Psalm 46 gives that assurance based on his own encounter and he tells us the means by which that experience can be attained. And I share such words again. God is our refuge and strength, a present help. And he said, well, be still and know that I am God. The Psalter or the book of Psalms was written out of the everyday experience of the people of Israel. The people spoke to God about whatever affected them, whether joy, sorrow, anger, or grief. And this psalm is said to be the inspiration by which the great reformer, Martin Luther, wrote, A mighty fortress is our God. And these words were written in the time, troublesome times, and it was difficult for Luther, the reformer in Germany, as he tried to bring some Christian standards to the church. Luther depended upon his God for strength. He depended on him to bring some resolve to the situation that confronted them. 
And he used this psalm as the medium to write his song. And I am sure Ricky must have known that. And that is why he chose this as a favorite. When I listened to the family and his connections and how he traveled overseas in his younger days with the church and the young people, I am sure that he must have known the value of such a psalm. So it is one of comfort and assurance, these two words that are important today for the Allen family and for all of us as we mourn. So I want to say a few things to you about this psalm. And firstly, I say, the psalmist declares his confidence in God as he promotes God as a refuge. He assures the people that the God of Jacob is a God of refuge, is a shelter, a secure fortress in which man can find protection from the troubles of the world. And you will agree with me that today we face many troubles, don't we? In various forms, and each day we encounter troubles. We have our financial troubles, we have our health troubles, we have our relationship troubles, and even as a country, we have our troubles financially. We see those countries, other countries that are fighting out of greed. If you look at Russia and Ukraine and so, so there is in life that continuous either problem or dilemma or some kind of trouble. And so we need a refuge. We need the presence of one on the whose wings we can shelter. And God has always been that refuge for us. The problem is that we do not run to the refuge. We run away, don't we? We run away. He was a refuge for Jacob and he promised and provided protection and companionship for Jacob. If you read Genesis 28, 15, he said, Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. And here we see this God. He made a promise to Joshua as well. Joshua 1, 5 to 6. Say, he said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. He said, what? Be strong and courageous. So our God maintains his promises. And therefore, as we mourn this afternoon, we can be assured that God is with us, but we just need to call on him in faith. Are we going to do that? Yes, we are going to do that. So God will be with you, friends. Just reach out, open your hearts, and allow God to dwell in it. The songwriter Vernon Charlesworth confirmed God's presence as a refuge when he penned to him, The Lord's my rock, on him I hide, a shelter in the time of storms. Therefore, as a refuge, God provides a hiding place for you and for me. May not be a physical one, but a spiritual protection. And when God covers or secures us, he sustains us. He doesn't leave us. He sustains us. And we know that sustenance or maintenance is very important today. Those who have vehicles, we know that we have to continue to maintain them. I've experienced that only Tuesday. And maintenance is not easy. So we need to have that when we call on God, when we reach out to God. We need to experience that maintenance with God as a refuge. So that's the first thing I say. The second thing I want to say is that the psalmist is declaring God as strength, the source of grace and power to take us through even this bereaved situation. 
Sister Arlene and family, Brother Arlene, God will take you through. Do not give up. Hold to God's unchanging hand. So all who are grieving, we need that strength. And we get that strength through the power invested in Jesus Christ. What did he say in Luke eleven nine? 9? Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find, and knock, and the door will be opened. And if we look back to Job's situation, he was going through some difficulty, and he recognized the strength of God, and he said, with him is wisdom and strength. So Job recognized that, Job 12, verse 13. Even the apostle Paul, he said he had a thorn in his flesh, and he went to God, and what did God say to him? My grace is sufficient. You all know it. My grace is sufficient. So that strength, that grace is sufficient for us today. And God is our everything. When we have God, we have no need. God can do what money cannot do. Agree? Yes. God can do what money cannot do. He can do what education cannot do. He can do what alcohol and drugs and those things cannot do. He can even do what our spouses cannot do. Believe me? Yeah. God will provide the strength for us to go back and to face life. Brother Ian, you may have somebody else coming in, but when that person comes in and you recall the Ricky you can say, let us pray together for Ricky's soul. Still remember him and still offer up a prayer. Let us pray together for the family. So God is going to give us strength. And Isaiah the prophet says he gives power to the faint and he strengthens the powerless. Isaiah 40, 29. So that is our God. He has the resource he has the resource, and we need not fear. When we heard the reading, though the earth changed, the mountains slip in the heart of the sea, waters roar, God is in the midst. I love my God because I know that I can reach out, and he is there. Do you all remember the story in Mark 4 when the disciples were in the boat, and there was this turbulence, and they were being fearful, and they said, Jesus is there sleeping. And Jesus moved forward like a dude, a cool dude, and said, peace, be still. So that is the power and the strength and so of our God. And the third thing I want to say that the psalmist is saying, is not only a refuge and a strength, but a present help in time of trouble. And that, this is what, God as Emmanuel is his present. He's not a far away help. He is not a past, but he is present. And even at this time in our bereavement, we have a present help. We just need to seek him. And you know what? His help comes at the right time. Never too late. Never too early, but just on the right time. You might have heard of a story of a man who was in a uh, boat and stranded. And it is said that another boat came and he ignored it. Helicopter came, he refused, and then he was destroyed. Because God has sent these things to rescue him, but he could not recognize the help. So you have to make sure that you recognize the present help that is provided for us. We will need that help at this time. So we have God as refuge, as strength, and as the present help. And the final thing I'm going to say, the final point, be still and know that I am God. Verse 10 of Psalm 46. So the psalmist is saying, in order to experience God as refuge and as strength, we must know him. We must be still before him. And the word still does not only mean sitting quietly, but the still 
and the mind listening to God, our entire being surrendering our minds and our bodies to God. What does that chorus say? Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And you know, in recent times, it has been very difficult for our, us to be still. You know that. We enter the house, and from the time we enter the house, on the television, on the radio, and we listen to other forces. But sometimes if we can take that time and sit before God, then we will hear from God. We are caught up with the messages and the the WhatsApp and the, I'm sure as I'm speaking, somebody in here is sexing. Yes? <laughs> or WhatsApping. Yes, we, we, we do not move away from these things and give God his due. So I want us to, to be still, to take some time out with God and to experience God even in this difficult time. So my sisters and brothers, I want to offer God to you this day as we mourn the loss of Ricky. I want us to depend on our God as that refuge and that shelter to overcome our situation here and other situations. This can apply to any other situation that you might have in your life. There's so many people who are moving around and they're carrying burdens. So I want you, as you go out, share with them. Psalm 46, God is your refuge. He will be your strength. He's your present help. Do not give up on your God. You promise me that? Yes, I'm getting some promises. So if you're uncertain of the refuge, take some time. Take some time. And, and this grace and this strength does not run out. It's not like our reservoirs that run dry and we have to close down in order to replenish. God is continuous. Just tap into him. Just tap into him. So in order to do that, we go before him. We pray to him. Let me encourage you. If you want to remember Ricky, I want to encourage you to pray to God. Keep praying to God. Don't just go like you're going with a shopping list. But go to God. Thank God for what he's done. Thank him for giving you Ricky. Thank him for what he's doing in your life. Thank him for what he will do. So make that promise to Ricky that you would pray every day for the sake of Jesus Christ. So we have our refuge, we have our strength, we have our present help in time of trouble, and we are going to be still and know that God is God. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we reflect upon the word. What is it saying to us? How are we going to use these words in our lives? How are we going to use them to help somebody else who might be suffering, especially at this time when there is so much sickness? What are we going to say to them? How are we going to encourage them? So let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for your word. Your word which is a light unto our path. We pray, O oh God, that these words will resonate in someone's heart, someone's mind, God. That we would not leave in here as we came, but even stronger, fortified, Lord, to go on, to hold to your unchanging hand. To recognize that you are the God who called, you are the God who provides you're the God who sustains. You're the God who protects. And so when we have God, we have you in our vessel so that we can smile at any storm. We thank you, O oh God, for Ricky. And we thank you for the contribution that he has made to the Methodist Church. We thank you for the contribution he's made to society. 
and to this country as a whole. And we pray, God, that you will be with him, never to leave him or forsake him, that you will embrace him in your arms and take him with you. So God, accept my prayers, offer on his behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith on page 7 in the order. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended on the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Kindly be seated. We go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need. In your sustaining grace, so that as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, God, that we too will not be disappointed, but that we too will look forward for that day when we all shall hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We continue in our prayer. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, O Lord and God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. Our praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of him whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing his life has brought to others, for his service to his generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of his life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed him all the days of his life. And now the trials of this world are over, and death itself is past. Receive him into your perfect kingdom, and bring us with all who have lived, and serve you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. As you would have heard, Ricky was very much associated with the Shrewsbury Methodist Church. He would have made a great contribution, offered his services, and so I'm sure he would have wanted us to make this collection here on his behalf. The family has asked that we do that, and so we are going to sing the hymn 188, and can it be, 
as the ushers wait upon you for the offering.
let us pray. All good gifts around us are sent from up above. So then, thank the Lord for his love. We thank you, gracious God, for your manifold blessings and benefits that are more numerous than the stars in the sky and more steady than our heartbeat. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to give uh, to your work within uh, the Shrewsbury congregation and its environs. We pray and ask that uh, these gifts that have been received may uh, be added towards building uh, your kingdom here on earth. Even, O oh God, uh, as uh, we continue in mission, as we remember our brother's life was a life of service and uh, hospitality unto others. Bless these gifts. And, O oh God, bless us all, that we too may offer our hands and our feet in service unto you for the glory of your name. Amen and amen. The commendation, the committal, sorry, the commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our brother, Henson Ricardo Carlyle, to your perfect uh, mercy and uh, wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join our voices again as we sing, Oh, I want to see him.
So now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and forever. Amen. Amen. We invite uh, Stetson Wilshire, uh, who will be singing during the recession.
We continue with the committal. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our brother has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in his mercy has taken him to himself, we therefore commit his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, in short and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray from death of sin to new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace and the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hush, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, Grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We join our voices as we sing the soon and very soon. When the roll is called up yonder, what a friend we have in Jesus when we all get to heaven and across the bridge.
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often
I have lived a life of sin In this world I'm living in I have done forbidden things I shouldn't do I ask a beggar along the way If he could tell me where to stay Where I could find real happiness And love that's true Across the bridge There's no more sorrow Across the bridge There's no more pain The sun will shine Across the river And you'll never be unhappy again Steps of the king till you hear the voices ring. They'll be singing out the glory of the land. The river Jordan will be near. The sound of trumpets you will hear, and you'll behold the most precious place ever known to man. Across the bridge, there's no more sorrow. Across the bridge. There's no more pain The sun will shine Across the river And you'll never be unhappy again Across the bridge There's no more sorrow Across the bridge There's no more pain The sun will shine Receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. On behalf of the Allen family, permit me to say thank you for your presence, for your support, for your various calls, and I encourage you to continue to keep them within your mind and to keep them within your prayers. Thank you very much.